Yeah, I like that one. Okay. Did I download this? Hopefully. Okay. So now let's go to Clo. Move some of my stuff out of the way. Um, okay, I think I only need 2D open right now. Okay, so file. Um, I guess import add. Da, 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 da. Let's see here. Uh, open add. Hmm. Okay, we have to make fabric, and then we import it uh, as a uh, graphic on the fabric. Because Lisa, you said you watched those videos already. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. I think that's probably what they did. So I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. Let's see here. I know we don't have our avatar. So um, yeah. Uh, what? Oh no, I have to reset my freaking thing. Oh gosh, dang it. Okay. Um, okay, so you'll start, I guess, with a really big piece of fabric. So I'm using my pattern drafting tool. Now again, we wanna make sure we know the difference between each tool. The first one can draw fabric. The second one can draw internal lines. And the third one does baselines. Um, so we're going to make a big square of fabric. And then we're going to add our photo on the fabric. And then we're going to use an internal tool to trace it. OK. So let me clear all of that. Clear and get rid of that. Okay, so how big is that piece? I don't know. Let's see. I'm not even sure. This is probably way too big, but I don't have an avatar open. I probably should have clicked it one time to type in the measurement. Oh well. Okay, so to add an image, we use this little tool right here, the graphic one, and we can add an image in it. So Which one? The t-shirt one, right? Over here, let me circle it. Okay. That guy. Uh, okay. Yeah. So let's give that a shot. Okay. Click. And it's gonna be like, okay, what graphic do you want? Um, this one I just downloaded. So I open. Now it's like, where do you want it? I mean, I guess I'll just click it in the middle. Okay, how big is it? Wow, that's super big. Um, I know because your cameras just take really big pictures. So roughly how big is it, would you say? Is it like like less than 20 inches, right? It's actually, so the length of it, because it's all one panel, mm -hmm. um, is roughly 30, roughly oh. 37 inches. Oh, long. that is long. OK, cool. And so, at the point, it's about. Well, the widest point is probably down at the bottom. Okay. Roughly 10 inches wide. Okay. So, I mean, I don't know. I'm just kind of, maybe, so I guess the picture was good at 50 inches. I don't know. So let's say, okay. Um, and then there it is. Okay. So there it is. So now we can use our edit graphic tool. I mean, we can rotate it. I'm going to hold shift so that it rotated exactly 90 degrees. And then now we got to figure out how to resize this guy. So, okay. So um, maybe a good thing to do. And I think the videos have different ways of how they suggest it. Um, so what, but what comes in my head is to make a rectangle, probably an internal one. Um, and I'll just click one time, like I'm doing here click uh, one time and then I can say, okay, I want my rectangle to be one inch by one inch. I'll say, okay. Okay, there it is, it's over here. So now I'm gonna move that rectangle. I'm gonna use the letter A tool to scooch it. Let's see here. And let's see how close I am. Uh, zoom in, guy, oh, that was really close. Whoa, wow. My photo is actually pretty close. Okay, so my photo is definitely larger because if my rectangle is one inch, this ruler has 13 to 14, and 14 is bigger than one inch, right? So I need to resize this photo so it matches my square. 
Um, so I'll use now, I used this tool to place the photo. I have to use this guy to edit it because it has a little white arrow. Okay, so let's see if I can do that. Click that guy, click it. Ah, oh, so annoying because it's so big. There we are. So maybe what I should do, because it's not that big of a difference, like, yes, I know I can click and drag, like, you know, right here, but that's going to be like way huge difference. And I don't want to do that because I was actually pretty close. So maybe what I'll do, I'll select my photo and then I'll go into the property editor. And I feel like it'll tell us how big it is here. So let's figure that out. Okay, looks like right now it's 50 inches. So I just need it a little bit smaller. What if I just try like uh, 49 inches? And wait, oh, is it gonna make it symmetrical or no? I hope it does. Oh no, it didn't. I don't undo. Okay, I need it to oh, lock. Okay, so you have to have um, the uh, lock aspect ratio button turned on. And if this is turned on, if I change the width number, it'll also automatically change the height and keep it proportional. So that's very important to do. Otherwise you might end up with like squishy shapes. Okay, so clear all drawings. Okay, so I'm gonna check that. There we go. Now, when I go click the picture, I can type in, I'm gonna try like 48 inches. And look, my 37 and a half changed to 36. Okay, I'm gonna zoom in. And let's look at my, I'm gonna letter A, so I can grab my internal line. How are we doing? Are we closer? I'm gonna put it on number 13. Uh, no, nope, it's still way too big. Okay, cool. So I'm gonna click the picture again. Um, I'm gonna get my edit tool, my graphic edit tool. I'm gonna click it. I think I clicked it. I don't even think I have to zoom in, to be honest with you. And let's, I'm gonna change to 48. What if I go a little more aggressive and do 40 inches and hit return? Okay, I'm going to now switch to the letter A tool so I can select my internal line. I'm going to bring it over. Now I'm on 12. Ooh, that's good. Look at that. Wouldn't you say the ruler and my internal line match? So that means this guy, he's good to go. He's, he's to scale. So we can get our internal line tool. Um, and draw it. So let's see here. What's kind of want to figure out the halfway point. Da, 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 da. That's fine. Okay. So let's get our instead of the rectangle, I'm going to switch to letter G, the internal polygon line. I'll start at center front. I'm going to click one time and I'm going to hold shift and go straight down. Okay. Now I know this is not really wavy. It just is wavy probably because it's been washed or it's just sewn the way it is. Um, I know that it's probably going to be a curve line. So to draw a curve line, I think if you hold command, yeah, on a Mac, it's command. On a PC, it's the button right next to the space bar. And then I'm going to click here. Um, I'm going to hold command again, so it's kind of curved. I wonder if I can click and drag. Ooh, no, click and drag, it doesn't. Oh, it kind of worked. Yeah, you can click and drag also. So those of you guys that know Illustrator, to get a curve, you can either hold the button next to the space bar or click and pull your mouse and that will get some curves. I'm gonna click right here, because that's not curved. Click right here, because that's not curved. I'm gonna try clicking and dragging at the net. So I can see my little preview line, it's straight. Click and drag. No, that did not work. Edit undo. Oh, oh no, oh, that's okay. I should have just hit backspace. Okay, I'll just do it again, click. I'm going to do click and drag, click. I kind of like clicking and dragging more now. Okay, because I like those handlebars. <laughs> click, maybe I'll do a click and drag right here, and then a click right there. Okay, let's see what that looks like. <clears throat> so now I can go in with my edit tool, the letter Z. I can zoom in. Um, I need to reset my... Uh, settings since I just redid Clo. And I have the power to kind of change some of my angles if I think any of them are kind of weird. You know, I can do it later. Um, and this is kind of just knowing patterns like your hem should be a 90 degree angle at center front for mm -hmm. a little bit. Oh, we learned a new feature. 
if you click that anchor point, can't we can, um, oh, it doesn't have it. Remember that one, it had merged to 90 degree? Oh. It's actually a tool. Is it a tool? Oh, where's the tool? Under the edit pattern tool. Oh, yay. Okay. Is it, was it one of these or no? Yeah, yeah it was, the, I believe it's the transform point or segment. Oh, okay, cool. So this guy, maybe I had to um, pull into both, hold shift. Oh my god, it's gonna bug me. Okay, maybe it can't be an internal line. Maybe it has to be a pattern piece. We'll come back to that. Okay. So okay, so here's my pattern. Um, so but it's actually not a pattern. It's just an internal line. So we, how do we get it to be a pattern piece? Do you guys know? Trace. Trace. Yeah, that's our trace tool. It looks like little pockets. So I'm gonna click that. Okay, uh, I'm gonna try to as soon as I get rid of the annotate. There we are. Click. Okay, so I can click that. All right, I'm holding shift. I'm clicking all these lines. Okay, I think it's all good. Right click, trace as pattern. All right, I'm zooming out. I'm gonna put it over here on my board. Okay, there it is. That's my pattern piece. Um, not a bad idea to name it, especially if you have a lot. So maybe like center front bodice, so you know. Um, and let's see if I can find that a uh, right click tool I was so excited about. I'm gonna letter Z. Mm. Yes, I guess you can only do it in patterns. You can't do it in internal lines. But if I click this point, because usually center front if it's going to be unfolded, you really want this to be a 90 degree angle. Otherwise, I'll, sometimes it looks like <coughs> or kind of weird. So if you click that point, you can right click and say perpendicular pattern corner. I like it for at least a half an inch. And I'll say, okay, so now it's going to be perfectly 90 degree angle, which is good. Even added that little thing. Um, you only need that at center front. You should actually also have it at the neckline as well. Click that guy, right click particular pattern corner 0.5 okay cool um overall i'm pretty happy with this pattern piece now so i'm just going to leave it and go to the next one so you'd have to i guess really if i go back here um, so, yeah sorry to interrupt sure. uh, uh, what was the step before that like how you were adding 0.5 uh, oh sure um sorry. i was making sure that my angle ah, let me go over here like, so when I unfold it, I'm gonna right click and just say unfold. Um, oh, that's why it happened, sorry. Fix this thing. Is there a segment here? What's going on? Oh, huh. why is it not unfolding? That's weird. Not unfold can be applied to, oh, I wonder why. Huh, why can you not be applied? That's odd really weird. Or oh, is it because we did the corners, the, um, the 90 degree corners? Let me try that. Hmm, that's weird. That's odd. Maybe that's why. Okay, oh. Symmetric pattern, not symmetric. Huh. Um, hold on, I'm gonna hit edit. Do, I guess get rid of those symmetric corners that I did. Uh, oh, no, it's still there. Okay, the symmetric corners are gone. Now select this guy, right click, unfold. Ooh, so you know what? Maybe adding the symmetric corners are bad because it wouldn't let me unfold it. Um, that's interesting. Well, that's good to know, I guess. Huh, that's kind of weird. I'm surprised that does that. But anyways, we just don't want it to be pointy. And so it's nice if like this angle right here is, is oops, it's not that, oh dear. Um, if from like right here to here, if it's like 90 degrees, because sometimes if it's at an angle, when you unfold it, it starts to look kind of pointy and funky. I'm exaggerating right here. This one's okay. 
but if you, it's a good pattern habit to anytime you have a center front, just make sure it's a perfect 90 degree angle at the corner. So when you unfold it, it's straight for a little bit and then it curves. Uh, just for knowledge sake, uh, I want to know how to do that. So I'm not going to do that here, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah. how would I make it straight? Um, you can get a ruler. A ruler is good. Um, but I guess in, you mean in Clo? In Clo, you can just select the point and right click. So like right here, if we wanted like maybe the neckline. Sometimes we also like to have it straight the neckline. You can just right click and say perpendicular pattern corner mm -hmm. and it'll change it. And you can just say, well, how long do you want to be perpendicular for? Oh, I said okay. half an inch. So yeah. So maybe I can do it right here too. Right click. Okay, yeah. Perpendicular. I guess you can do it after you unfold it. 0.5. There we go. So oh, I don't like it. I don't know why it's not working. Huh. Okay, well, whatever. Might not be the best advice to use that tool. So you guys are struggling, just don't do it. <laughs> it's fine. And just visually make sure it looks good. Okay, so I have one pattern done. Honestly, you guys, I don't need this thing anymore. So I'm gonna select it and I'm gonna hit delete. Gone, I don't care. Now I'm going to pick a new one. So I'll click the t-shirt again. Do you need another my window? I'm gonna go find the next picture, right? I'll you need the next one. one. Yeah. Do you want me to do the next one as well? Cool. Yeah, sure. So I'll pick that one. I'll delete this guy because that's the same one. And let's go to chat. How about this? Actually, do you want to share screen and you do the next one? Sure. Let's do that because okay. So I'm gonna say stop share make sure doing this right. Okay. So I have just my 2D window open, right? Yeah, that's all you need for now. And then I would use my rectangle tool to create a fabric. Yeah, you got it. Okay. And we want to keep the height somewhere around the 50 inches. I thought 50 inches was huge. It could be smaller, but it, it worked. So why not? It doesn't matter. So at the end of the day, we're going to delete that fabric anyways. We're just kind of using it so we could trace it and then turn those into pattern pieces off of it. So it doesn't really matter. Okay. And then I use my graphic pattern? Yes, correct. Okay. Um, yep. Nice. You just center it in there. <laughs> I just click to set it in? Yeah. And yeah. Okay. Okay, so it's really big. Maybe we make your fabric bigger. Mm -hmm. um, so how do we do that? Yeah, that's a good idea. Try that. Do I just pull it out? Try it. Yeah, that worked. Worked. Good. <laughs> See, that was intuitive. I'm like, oh boy, are they gonna give us trouble and like stretch your picture? No, they didn't. Okay, good. Perfect. Lovely, okay. So then, Edit texture? No, transform texture. Yeah. Yes, correct. I don't remember how I wrote it. Oh, look right there. Do you see the arrows? If you click and drag, you can turn it. Now yeah. hold shift so it only turns like nine, exactly in the 90 degree angle. Perfect. Haha. -ha. Okay. Now what are we gonna do? What's the next important thing to do? Was making a rectangle the one inch? Yeah, that's what I would do is let's get a marker of something that actually is one inch by one inch. And then we'll work to get the photo to match. Cool. Oh, you drew a pattern piece. Um, will it let you put that pattern piece on top of the photo or is it gonna give you trouble? Probably gonna give me trouble. Um, cause you could do an internal line instead of a pattern piece. 
I don't think it likes it when patterns overlap each other. No, nope, it didn't care. Okay, good. Uh, perfect. Good to know. Cool. Okay, cool. So how close are we? Let's look at this. Oh, an internal line might have been smarter because you Why? can hear it. Oh. So your ruler's at an angle. Do you want to turn that square to also be at an angle? Yeah. You're pretty close, your photo, isn't it? Yeah. I'm about, what is that? Three eighths off? Yeah, oh my God, this is such good math. So like right now, it's definitely bigger than the inch, but it's like, it's almost, yeah, you're saying three eighths. Oh my gosh. If it, so what, if you make your photo, like, uh, I don't know what, what, what is a five eighths percentage wise, like 65% or something. So you could select your image. And then when you rescale it, choose 65%. I wonder if that would do it. Or you can just what do what I do and just kind of knock off a few inches and look at it and go back and kind of go back and forth just to trial and error. All right. So let's so, see. Edit. Yes. And select the thing. I think your image is selected. Now what? <laughs> Yeah, I don't remember. I think we have to type in the number and it will let you in the property. Oh, property editor. editor. Yeah. That's right. Kind of at the bottom. Mm -hmm. bit, yeah. Graphic configuration. Graphic yeah. transformation. Transformation. Lock. I love that you're locking your aspect. Okay, stop real quick. Um, oh, do you want to do that command space bar tool you taught me? <clears throat> oh, yeah, sure. Okay. She's on a Mac. And then type in calculator. Or you can just type in the number. Oh, so what if you say 56 times 0.65? That's times it by six, because I think five eighths is like 0.65 something. I don't know. Equal, okay, so 36. What if you type in 36.5 inches? In that width? seems really small. I don't know if that's going to work, but let's try it for fun. In, in width or height? Oh yeah, you know what? I changed my. I don't think it matters because it's your lock aspects gonna be okay. okay. So oh yeah, so width yeah width because I use the width number. What was the number that we did again? Thirty six. Six point five. We what was it? Thirty. Oh, thirty six. Yeah, point five. Okay. Let's see if this works. I'm trying to do math. Uh, thirty six point five. Okay, get your square. Let's see if we're close or not. I love that you switched to the letter A tool. Hey, that's pretty good. So it's um now your picture's a little bit too small, a hair too small. Mm -hmm. So maybe you go back and just make it like we made it a lot smaller. We took off like 15 inches, didn't we? What if you just made it like one inch bigger? Professor, uh, could you please repeat on how you arrived at 36 points? Yeah, I did math, so I will explain it. But if it's like, Kyla, I don't want to do fractions or percentages. Leave me alone. I will not force you because I've just seen the struggle of math and people like huzzah. Hey, good. So another thing is just trial and error. So when I did it, I was like, oh, it's <laughs> at fifty six. I'm gonna try fifty four. And I went and looked. And I was like, oh, that wasn't really a big difference. Maybe instead of fifty four, I'll do like forty five. <laughs> and it was way closer, you know. So I just put in random numbers and saw if it was close or not. That could be faster. But the math thing, what I did was um, she has a ruler right there. And I felt like her square, I wish her square was like a more round number, but it was like at five eighths. She's like, oh, I can see three eighths. Mm -hmm. Like it just needs to be three eighths bigger. So I was like, okay, so it's at five eighths right now. I don't even know how I did this, but um, but let's say it was like, so I knew that it, it needed to just be smaller percentage wise. And I just, I don't even know how to explain that. Um, like, uh, here, wait, um, yeah, I don't even know. My brain's like, what, how did I do that? So like right <laughs> now, 
purse where oh. it fits the the one inch perfectly. You took so, the the measurement that was um, already here in the width. Yeah. Um, yeah. In the well, let me get back into the tool. So the so, width. I would the width you here. explain it. Go ahead. Okay. So you took the the width here, which was 50, 50 something. Yeah. And then multiplied it by 0.625, which is five eighths. Yeah. And it came up with 36.5, which was just a hair small. So we just went up, I just added an inch. So instead of 36.5, I did 37.5 and huzzah, we are on point. Yes. The, the way yeah, I was going to say is like right now you're at 37 and right now it fits perfect. So like if I wanted to get the picture to change, I would say, oh, hundred percent, like the picture should be at times 100%. And because that's just times one, there's no change. But so I was just trying to look at the percentages. Do I want to double it or less? I don't know. Or just putting random numbers until it matches. I don't need to go faster. So, okay. This is why I'm like, can we like work with the math department and make this a math GE class? Like kind of get it more official and then you guys don't have to take math. <laughs> Just uh, do it I feel like that is a wise comment. It would make more sense sometimes. Okay, cool. Okay, so we like the scale of this guy. So now you can get to work tracing it. Well, you, before you trace it though, what do you have to do in Clo? I keep saying tracing because like by hand, you just go trace it, but like really, what do you, what tool do you have to use in Clo? The internal draw tool. Yeah. Do you know the keyboard shortcut? G. Yeah. Very good. I'm all about shortcuts. I know me too. All right. So luckily it has clear seam lines. So here's the armhole here. Now real quick, this is totally fine, but, um, I might argue like, uh oh, it's a little wrinkly, right? And that's okay. Like that's hard to get that straight. So you might end up changing <clears throat> that seam line to be something more like the green line I drew. Mm -hmm. It's just you just it, you weren't able to get it super flat. Totally okay. Like that's that's just hard to do, especially with princess seams, right? Like this is such a three dimensional garment. Yeah. Um, so because of that wiggle and just because of my experience, I know this oh, yeah. is probably going to be the shape of your armhole. So just look out for those wiggles. Um, basically what would happen is like, as you trace this guy, when you go to fit it, you're gonna know this is weird. And you're gonna analyze your shape. And when you do a fitting, you're gonna probably change the shape, you know, to be a little bit more straight. So, yeah. Okay, you're clicking and dragging to get a curve. I like it. I should probably these, zoom out so I can see what I'm doing. Better. These graphic prints are so nice because you can really see the grain line, right? Like just going straight up and down, catching all those diamonds right in the middle. So you really know that it's on grain. That's cool. Very nice. Wow, that's cool how it butts out. See that how it like really kicks out. Yeah. That's what gives you some like a little swing at the hem, a little fullness there. And again, now the whole bottom thing. Um I went the wrong way. <laughs> I'm totally fine if you just, you know, me like if you kind of fake it to make it, you know, draw your own curve. You always have to trace it perfectly, especially if it's like been washed, it kind of shrunk a little, it's kind of funky shape. You know, that's part of chewing it up is sort of cleaning up the bottom as opposed to like trying to trace it like, ooh, right? Like you don't want to hem like the green line I just drew. You definitely want to kind of clean it up so that it's smooth. I know we're so lucky though that we do get to see this sewn up on Clo. We don't have to do all this work. And then it's like that. In the office. Like your funky shape right here. If we did this by hand, oh my gosh, none of the students would know it's funny until after they sewed it up. You're like, why does it look so weird? And yeah. um, they wouldn't know how to fix it. It was just, it's cool that we get to see it sewn up in clo right away and go play with our pattern shape back and forth. I did a, a little um, 
the swimsuit project. Uh huh. Yeah. I I did it with a pencil, a three D pencil, and I was like, oh, it's like it looks good if it's on the bottom. So once like it got sewn up, like it's like it was like this, and then, like once it was like this, like it was like bunching up. You're like, ah, you're like, thank God I didn't waste like eight hours of my life cutting that out and sewing it up. <laughs> then you just go fix the pattern real quick and see what happens. I got to admit, I've knocked off a few things and this is probably the easiest it has ever been. Ooh, yeah. I like hearing that. I, I'm not super happy that um, this is going straight up and down. I really feel like it's, it's probably going to, but maybe you'll figure that out during your fitting. I feel like this line. Oh, it's definitely going to need to curve. It's okay. not a straight line. Yeah. Yeah. So anyways, that's just, but, but that's okay. If you're just tracing it for now, you can just true it up later. Mm -hmm. Cool. So good. I love right now. Do you have two pattern pieces drawn? Oh no. Now you have to trace it. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. So I know I have her other pattern piece, but the next step that we should do is true up the seams that get sewn together. So the only seam that gets sewn together, I guess, is the princess seam. So we want to check the length and match them. Now, the thing with princess seams is sometimes one princess seam is a little longer than the other one. Do you guys remember that from a notebook sample? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we like rotated a dart on purpose so that one of the princess seams was longer. If the one that's longer is the one on the side. And so that way, when you sew it, you're easing it. So it can be anywhere from like half an inch to maybe a full inch, which is kind of hard. So, um, but normally when we true up our seams, we want them exactly the same length. So you would <clears throat> do that in Clo with letter Z, right click and change length and get them cleaned up as best you can. Okay, there you go. Maybe name it while you're at it before we, they start getting confusing. Like, is this is the front back. What is this guy? Yeah, yes. uh, Professor, the name would be visible only when you take a snapshot. Um, it can be sometimes, um, not always. So I like that she's putting it under information in the property editor. Um, it can be, let's see here. Why don't we find out? Um, will you go, Lisa, to file um, snapshot 2D pattern? um aha let's see here under options will you go to show additional information that means class is almost over there's like oh, a little check thing there mm -hmm. yeah pattern name so as long as you have pattern names checked it will show the pattern names when you do a snapshot yeah good question so do we have to save those things professor or just uh, it will be saved on left side panel after writing that it will get stored automatically oh because it wrote it right here uh-huh well yeah it's only there because she put it in the property editor yeah. so yeah so i don't know if it'll always say you can say yeah i don't know um I, no i think it won't like this is just what the snapshot's going to look like and then it'll go away so say cancel right now if you want to see it while you're working, you want to do that in the toggle menu. So probably under info, try that. Let's see here. There, there's that cool. first one. Yeah. There you go. Now it shows it while you're working. So that's probably helpful. So you can see it while you're working. Yeah. So anything else you want it? So much info, your green line, all that good stuff. Cool. Um, okay. So this module tracing all those things. And then I don't know, am I having you, I don't even remember if I'm having you true it up this, I know I'm not having you sew it up. You don't have to sew it up yet, believe it or not. I know everyone's gonna be like tempted, like, oh, I wanna see what it looks like. Um, let me get rid of that. I think all I want you to do is trace them all. I think I want you to true them up. Oh wait, oh, you're in that thing. Um, will you go to the back, to go down to the bottom of that and hit um, back? Or previous, I'm sorry, yeah. And, Scroll down kind of to the bottom. Up a little bit more. Oh, is this a POM one? Oh shoot, mm -hmm. sorry. Okay, go back to forward to the next one. I was, I thought, I don't know what I was thinking. Okay, scroll down. Okay. Uh, oh yeah, number 10. I do want you to true up the pattern pieces. 
So just check that each length is anything that gets sewn together, they're the same length and kind of clean it up and make it look as nice. And then um, next module, we're gonna sew it up. Yeah, in module nine. And then I'll show you how to check the POM measurements next week. Can we take a snapshot of the two D just to show the line length? um oh my gosh that's really good it should huh i didn't say that <laughs> that's a good idea yeah should do that. okay um i'm gonna go change the design right now so when you do your snapshot go back to snapshot on a uh, clo see how you have showing all your line lengths mm -hmm. so go to file snapshot and it's one of the boxes you check but the only thing is though it has all those segments but whatever but yeah that is a good idea um so where it's that you have line lengths check, I should make that mandatory so that I can visually see you treat it up. That's a way, mm -hmm. easier way to grade. <laughs> cool. Yay. Okay. Yeah, that's brilliant. Okay, cool. That's it, guys. We ran out of time. So that's what we're doing this module, you know. It's a lot, but it's pretty cool to be able to do it once you know how to <laughs> make some cool stuff. So yeah. All right, Carla, you've been quiet. Do you have any questions? No, I don't. I just been <clears throat> looking. Okay, good. And this is recorded, which is good. I actually might post this recording and for the demo in the class. I might cut it up and do that since, yeah, we, I guess we didn't have a good demo yet. All right, guys, I will see you next week. I'm going to get ready for my next class. And yeah, I mean, if you have questions, otherwise, I'll see you next week. Thank you. Yeah. Bye. Bye.